misogynistic creepy pastor goes up to Gino he gives him a big hug and he wants to share some of his godly wisdom with him as an ex-pastor I have counseled a lot of couples ew I wonder what kind of up advice he gave all those people. He probably told the women that they needed to be more understanding of everything wrong with their husbands. I can totally see Ben saying that type of bull So moving on to Ben and Mahogany, I noticed that as the show was replaying their clips, Mahogany didn't even watch any of it. Her eyes were looking down the whole time. So at least she has some self-awareness that their whole relationship was so f***ing cringy to watch. And she finally admits that she lied about her age. And Sean goes, Ben, would you have dated her if she was truthful about her age? And Ben, oh, he acts all puzzled. And he's like, hmm, you know, I, I don't know. Okay, what is the difference between 22 and 23? Why is it that if she told you that she was 22, that you would be hesitant? And 23 is perfectly fine? Now Jessica makes an appearance. Remember Jessica is Ben's friend we saw on his first episode, AKA the woman that Gino DM'd. She asks Mahogany, why on earth would you ask him for a thousand dollars? Um, you know, I think the question should be redirected to Ben and we should ask him why he sent her a thousand dollars because I think it's f***ing weirder to send a woman you've never met, a girl who's 30 years younger than you, the same age as your daughter, a thousand dollars. That honestly reminds me of an episode of SVU. I don't really like Jessica. It seems like she holds very similar values that Ben does about what a woman should and shouldn't do. She's like, it doesn't make sense that you're too shy for FaceTime, yet on Instagram, all your photos are provocative. Shut the f up. That's absolute garbage. Then this is a part that really got me. We find out that Pastor Preto went back to Peru after that final episode when they broke up because he needed more answers. So he just goes there, forces her to see him, forces her to talk to him, and I guess she finally gave in. They talked things out, they spent some time together, and now they're dating. The real problem that I don't understand why no one is mentioning is that he crossed all of Mahogany's boundaries over and over and over and over again. He didn't give her a choice. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but Jasmine was the voice of reason in this segment because she brought up that Ben went against her wishes by going to Peru. Ben, she letting you know before you arrived to Peru, she was not longer interested and you kind of chasing her and knowing that she's so young, it gives me like pervert vibes. <laughs> Then Jessica, Mahogany, and Jasmine are arguing. Ben likes that these women are kind of fighting over him. He's telling Mahogany all this shit about Jessica, and then he's telling Jessica all this shit about Mahogany. So they both hate each other, and they're essentially fighting over him. And then finally, Jessica realized that her bestie had been talking shit about her behind her back the whole time, and she has this aha moment of like, oh, Ben? is a liar and he's been acting like he's this poor innocent man in love with this girl who's just playing his heart. Jessica has finally seen the light and she tells Ben we're done. Now they take another break before Mike and Jimenez part and of course they saved the best for last although it was kind of disappointing like uh, nothing really happened but as I predicted everyone was on Mike's side. Poor Mike, sweet Mike, he's got everyone rooting for him and they're ready to defend him. Memphis actually leaves because she was feeling really sick and Sean was like, Hamza, are you staying? And he's like, hell yeah, I'm staying for Mike and Jimena's train wreck. So apparently Mike and Jimena are back together. Very, very confusing. But I can see how that happened given Mike calling Jimena back again and offering to pay her rent, that he really wants to try to work things out. So then Jimena confirms that they are together and I was like, wow, okay. And she straight up says to everyone, like in front of everyone, she's like, no, I don't love Mike, but he said that he'd work on things. And so we're gonna meet up and see how things go. And everyone's like, oh my 
God, this is horrible. She's a horrible human being, using him for his money. Oh my God, what do you people not understand? He knows that she doesn't love him. She has told him, she's so upfront about it. And he knows that she's repulsed by him, that she doesn't like anything about him. But he's the one who won't let go. As we saw in the last or final episode, he called her up after they broke up, after she kicked him out of her house. He calls her up, literally begging for another chance. He told her that he wants to keep paying rent after their breakup. Okay, that's his choice. She tried to break up with the dude over and over again, but he keeps chasing her and he's begging her. He's throwing money at her. He's literally, okay, she was like, listen, we're done. Don't send me money, we're broken up. And then he's like, I, I still wanna pay your rent. What the f is she supposed to do? <laughs> Get a restraining order? No, I would take that money. Fine, I told you everything up front. I, I told you I don't like you, you disgust me, I wanna break up. But if you still wanna pay my rent after me telling you all this, then go ahead, okay? Why not? <laughs> They're all like, oh, you can totally see in her face. She doesn't really love him. Yeah, she said she doesn't love him like five minutes ago. She just said that. And then his friend, John, asks her, why are you with Mike? Because he won't leave her alone. He's literally throwing himself at her over and over again, despite her breaking up with him over and over again. Oh my God. Please tell me that these people are on Mike's side because they have not seen the last two episodes or else I'm gonna fucking flip a table right now. They're all attacking her, calling her a user, a gold digger. And then she walks off camera, which I don't blame her. Mike is freaking out. His face looks like a tomato. He looks like he's gonna burst a blood vessel because I think he realized that he finally got Jimena to agree to give him another chance. And now it's all because everyone's attacking her. Jimena comes back on screen. Nelsie goes off on her. Jimena walks off again. And Mike's like, shut up, Nelsie. So then Nelsie leaves, Jimena comes back. Everyone's yelling at Jimena, you need to learn English. To really put in the effort to learn English. There you go, Jimena, learn English. Jimena says that she'll give the relationship another chance. Mike is relieved. And I think everyone realized that Mike is just a lost cause. He's gonna keep chasing her no matter how many times she breaks his heart. And that's it, the show's over. Now what I found really, really interesting is that at the very, very, very end, Mike is backstage, he calls Jimena and she's like, Mike, I love you. We're gonna get married and prove everyone wrong. And he's so happy. And like at this point, I feel like she's just staying with him out of spite cause she hates Nelsie so much. And she's like, ooh, I'm just gonna drive that fucking crazy, you know? I'm a little confused cause they left that episode as if we're gonna see more of them. Like, oh, they're gonna give this another try and we're gonna see them again. But I, I don't think that's gonna happen because isn't Jimena married now with like another guy? <laughs> So yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna see any more of them, which I'm pretty sure TLC is really bummed about. Well, the season's done and it did not disappoint at all. I was very entertained the entire time. And next Sunday, we're gonna get the OG 90 Day Back, a brand new season with new cast members. Oh my God, TLC, could you not have given us like a week off? Are y'all gonna watch? Cause you know I am. <laughs> Okay, let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Have a fabulous day, everyone, and bye.